Welcome to a new test and teardown video. This time it's a ship VHF radio. It's called Sailor RT2048 Compact VHF. And this one is the later Trane and Trane uh, version. Originally they were uh, designed by SP Radio and the SP uh, radios they are kind of green in the color and the Trane and Trane uh, version is uh, of course blue. Other than that it is a um, discontinued product so if you go onto uh, the official web pages you will see the discontinued. It doesn't really say a lot more than just discontinued and then you can dig down to um, the specifications and see that this is a 25 watt transmitter it's for 12 volts and it got from 10 to 40 uh, channels it can do uh, scanning and the the call distress channel is 16 and it's also prioritized in a way when it's scanning it monitors in a dual scan kind of way uh, channel 16 this one is uh, quite corroded and in a quite bad shape, as you can see here. So I don't dare to power it up in the first little go here. I think I should definitely open it first. Do I a deep, deep inspection before I have a go? I just contacted one of my super expert friends who knows all about SP radios. He also got a web page full of all the real manuals and really, really beautiful pictures. Um, please go to uh, peel.dk. I will put a link in the description so you can go directly to all the goody goody stuff. And he also tells me uh, they stopped manufacturing this unit in um, 1993 and they made 130,000 units of this model in total wow that is a lot Ooh, yo, yo, it looks corroded that is bad he also told me it's very very important i repeat this loud and clear how to open this unit if you see the two larger screws here on the back this one and that one those are the one you uh, remove and then you pull out the unit to the front out of the outer chassis if you are really really wrong and this is what people do they remove those four screws and then they take a screwdriver and try and pull out the front but the rest is of course mounted here on the on the back with those two screws and they actually damage everything here by doing this so don't ever do that if you want to open this unit you need to do it the right way and that is definitely those screws it's not super obvious when you look at it like that you see there's a rubber uh, gasket here and it definitely looks like you need to do something here from the front and you see four screws in the front so i do understand why some people could um, fall for that mistake uh, i don't know if you can see all the dirt here on the table this is really really bad that is actually coming oh, this is here <laughs> i don't know did somebody find this on the bottom of a lake or something it is of course very very old and it is definitely beat up uh, maybe i should try and show you how it looks i mean it's probably been sitting outside look at that completely corroded so that is not working at all yeah but you can laugh all you want about this good old telephone uh, handle here but you can imagine if you're going real fast on a boat or if you're outside in a storm or whatever and you want to you know contact somebody you're not able to hear anything on this little built-in speaker this only won't uh, work inside in a closed uh, boat but this is also used outside and then you need the little speaker here to have it directly up your ear 
and then you can yell and scream here and you push to talk here and it just this makes a lot of sense in a really noisy hardcore environment well, that didn't go exactly as planned uh, both of my screws there are now broken and uh, i started to use my normal tool <laughs> there's just no way at all so i ended up finding the biggest i could find uh, i had my wife sit on this one and then i did all i could hear at the same time and then i'm sorry i broke both of the screws but now it looks like i am able to can you hear the oy, oy, oy. it's gonna be fun to see if i am able to get it <coughs> Why isn't it not coming? Oh, you can see it's quite nasty. <laughs> All this corrosion and goody goody stuff in there. <clears throat> I don't know. I need to uh, see how I. <sighs> not easy. Look at over there nastiness that's coming out this is probably a little corrosion and sand and whatnot oh, oy, 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 oy. this is probably not going to be a fast and easy repair video i'm still not able to <coughs> get the damn thing out it is that corroded that was real tough but anyway I am in. <laughs> I got this. This is just totally corroded together with everything, or it's just. I need to clean all this. Look at that. Can't wait to see how it looks inside, but. Yeah, let's try and get these uh, shields off. And let's see what we got inside. So, you see, it's full of all sorts of goodies. I just keep breaking all the screws and there's no way in here, see? And this one I just pulled out the entire thread. So there's nothing in here anymore. And this one broke. I don't know if I'm ever able to get inside. Oh, the massive corrosion. Oh my. God, that is not so nice. I think it's going to take more than 10 minutes to repair this one. So let's have a little look in here as well. Oh no, I'm gonna take off both of the sides. Yank them off like... Why isn't this one coming off? Hmm, it looks like it's really, really stuck. It's just... Oh, yo, 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 yo. Look at the beautiful corrosion. And there's a funny little plastic trimmer pin in here. Look at that, how cute. So this one is, of course, so you can go in and fine-tune everything. And that is, of course, made of plastic, so it's not corroded. <laughs> and this one will fit everything. So in a minute I can tune this up and uh, trim it in, and then we have a brand new radio, right? Oi, oops, yay. Oi, yo, 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 yo. Oh, I found the buck. It's just those pins. It's just a little bit corrosion, yeah? Nah. Still trying to get into the power amplifier and transmitter section. It is, uh, yeah, this is the IF, and it's really nicely hinged. Funny enough, the hinges here seems to be working. And I'm supposed to get inside here. We got some screws, and they're probably stuck as well. So I'm a little bit curious if there's any way to get into the power amplifier. We'll see. Ooh, I'm getting dirty. I 
can reveal to you an old, old car mechanic trick about super duper corroded screws like these. And that is to hit them with a frame flame like this. And while they're burning, burning hot, all this rust and stuff actually gets a little bit loose. And then if I am not mistaken, No, no, no. <laughs> Damn it. I was so much hoping I could do this. And this is also a nice way to destroy your screwdriver. But it worked on that one. <laughs> so I was so hoping to be able to repeat it with that one. Damn. So it actually worked with most of the most of the other screws, but not all of them. So I am a little bit curious to see. If I am able to get in and just pull it apart without that screw, we'll see how bad everything turns out here. Uh, I probably need some bigger screwdrivers or something like that, right? So I can. <clears throat> Damn, this one is a task. Of the more annoying, I must say. But it's gonna be fun to get in there sooner or later. Look at the massive corrosion all over the place. So this is the transmitter unit, and there is a power amplifier module down here. That is Bring the rest of the bits. Everything is just so badly corroded. That is the power supply input. I cannot power this on as you can imagine. Nothing here is going to let me do that. There's a nice little connector here that will do something I guess. Oh, we got some capacitors in some. It's actually quite funny, the flat cable connectors here. They are gold plated, as you can see here. So they don't really corrode. And when I pulled the other plugs from the other boards, everything was just perfectly fine. So let's try and pull one of these. Clickety click. Nice gold. Oops, not so nice. Okay, yeah, see the gold plated pins, they're fine, but the connector is full of corrosion because it fell down to the connector, it's not coming from that connector. So that is uh, iron that has been coated with some nickel or something so you can solder on this little shield plate and the corrosion went through that plating. It's a little relay for RXTX and that is the antenna connector. You see that little pin here in the middle. Got a low pass filter that's the coils, the three coils and the capacitors. That is a nice low pass filter for the from the transmitter to the antenna. And then of course RXTX relay and the small little transistors you find down there and down here. That will be RX amplifier and probably also some injection. So there's probably a little mixer here and then IF filters, uh, this, the two crystal filters here, and then a little bit more amplification, and then we go down to IF. So that one here, the big, the big black part you see here in the middle, that will be IF filter, and then it's probably even FM discriminator part. 
I would expect some of that to be up here. And then they just take, but there, there's an IF filter, 500 kilohertz or something like that, right? And that's probably what it is. So up here we will have another crystal. Hmm, interesting. So that is the rest of the receiver and transmitter. Probably also PLLs and stuff like that. So in here we'll have the VCO. So that would be PLL and dividers. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, some counters and stuff like that. And then the microcontroller can be uh, the interface here. Select the different frequencies you want to transmit and receive. So that is a little pre amplifier buffer. And then the output goes via a nice little coax connector down to the transmitter somewhere. One of these. Yeah, we gotta see what's inside the VCO, right? Yeah, that was white. Right, this is the VCO. So you got a nice little oscillator. Oh man, everything is just so nasty. And even it's it's just yeah, gross in all possible ways, to be honest. I don't even know if I care to put this together. What else haven't we been looking at? Oh, I want to try and clean up a little bit. Let's have a little deeper look on the front panel electronics. Also quite nasty corrosion. So they even cared to make a nice box for the speaker. So this way you get good audio quality and also it's, it's just better to close the back side like that. That is a little bit funny. And um, what you see here, the solder points right there and right here, that is the display. See the display is right there. So there is only this circuit board here, squelch potentiometer, power on and volume. That is that one. And that turns, see, click. And it even moves quite fine. It is definitely reveals that this unit was plugged in with uh, yeah, power on while it was still wet for many, many years. And you can see, see the, that is revealed by different levels of corrosion on different pins. So that reveals, uh, yeah, you had voltage and that uh, creates a lot of more corrosion on special areas with voltage on, on them, right? So that is the microcontroller with the software that's doing all the scanning and interfacing and the fancy things. Oh, well, that is a powerful magnet in the, in the speaker unit. Yeah, I don't want to show you guys so much more uh, about this unit. There's no way I can restore this or get it powered up or anything like that. But if you want to see a really, really beautiful one inside, nice pictures of every little circuit board and every little detail, please go to the linked uh, webpage, peel.dk. And uh, yeah, he took some really, really good professional pictures of uh, his unit. And that is, of course, in a good, good working state. Not like this one in absolutely trash state. So thank you very much for watching. <laughs> Please come back soon. Have fun. Stay safe.